My name is uh, Lars Hulgaard. I'm a professor of social entrepreneurship and social innovation at Roskilde University. Uh, I work uh, a lot uh, internationally on, on social economy, solidarity economy, social innovation. I'm also a permanent visiting professor at a university in Mumbai in India, Tata Institute of Social Sciences. Um, and it has been my big pleasure during the last 20 years to collaborate with scholars uh, globally in Latin America, in, in, in Europe and, and, and in Asia. At Roskilde University, I have founded our Center for Social Entrepreneurship in 2006. If we talk about social innovation, many would argue it is a rather new field of research and field of uh, expertise. In fact, if we look at um, publications on social innovation, we will see that there were only a very, very few un until uh, the 1990s. And it only after the turn of the century, we really saw social innovation as a field in itself uh, to expand and grow. However, the notion of innovation and also of social innovation, in fact and in reality, goes back centuries. And, and this, is, uh, this is something we, we only knew for, for a few years. You see, it's a, it's a new field of research because uh, many societies are simply stuck uh, with problems um, that cannot be solved with, um, with the measures, the tools, the perceptions, the epistemologies uh, that we have uh, used so far. Um, so there is an, an immense policy interest in activating all corners of societies, all types of, um, of expertise to work uh, in interdisciplinary ways in solving many of these problems that we cannot, that we're not been able to solve so far. Not just technological innovation, but social innovation. In fact, uh, one of the uh, great uh, 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 Nobel Prize uh, economists, uh, Joseph Stiglitz, claimed that due to many of these problems, social innovation today may be at least as important as technological innovation. Personally, I'm, I'm very uh, much inspired by research environments that can also link social innovation to the question of a, a more plural economy and plural uh, uh, political system that we than we are used to. Plural economy in the sense that um, uh, that not only not only the conventional market uh, is the the field of of ec economic action, but also um, uh, social enterprises, solidarity enterprises, social economy uh, are important. Uh, econ economies to invest in. So social innovation uh, within paradigms that are looking at, uh, when we talk in, in, in political terms, looking at uh, ways of co-producing services, meaning that also the public sector, the welfare state, need to, to behave and develop in a new way the conventional economy need to, to behave and develop in a new way, in more collaborative ways in, in all areas. A lot of things are happening. I think uh, the social innovation research today is marked by, by two big things. Uh, firstly, a, a, a great scholar from Glasgow, uh, Simon Teasdale, he, uh, he argues that we can see one tendency uh, as a strong, strong type of social innovation, another is a weak type of social innovation. So he makes this distinction between weak and strong traditions in social innovation. Weak is that we only need to look at the output, the product of social innovation. Is there a new, is there a new service? The strong tradition is also to look at the, the process, the way this, this innovation was produced. 
and both need to be social. Uh, this is actually very much in line also with the thinking of the European Union, the, the European Commission. But when we look at reality, I would argue that the weak type of social innovation is in fact uh, dominating, where we only look at the end, end product, end result. Then uh, one of the most uh, important uh, scholars in social innovation, Professor Frank Mulat from Belgium, in a recent research project he did for the European Commission, he argues that there's an American tradition and a European tradition in social innovation. Uh, the American tradition is very much driven by, by business schools, uh, uh, emphasizing the connection to, to, to business, to conventional enterprises. Whereas uh, in, in the uh, Euro-Canadian version, it is also linked to perceptions of another economy, also the long tradition of a, of a social economy that has been very important also in the history of um, the Scandinavian welfare states. Uh, this may be the most important question to ask since we are scholars here. Uh, usually as scholars, we identify ourselves as um, agriculturalists, sociologists, economists, mathematicians, whatever. However, uh, problems in the world uh, are multidimensional. They are uh, transsectoral. They, they do not accept these, these boundaries, these sectors. So our, our capacity in, in working in inter, interdisciplinary uh, teams is, is uh, too weak. We, we really need to, to, to understand better how to integrate disciplines, how to work not only across disciplines, but, but really integrate with respect in order of understanding the roots of the causes and thus also to move on to, to, um, uh, to give some of the answers to these big problems. I think this is the biggest challenge for social innovation research today, to integrate as scholars what is already integrated as problems. If we cannot do that, we'll never be able to come up with the right solutions uh, concerning climate change, concerning the divide between rural and urban, concerning what it means to have a good uh, life, uh, uh, both as children and, and, and when aging um, as a population. Funding of research uh, tends to still to follow the old uh, paradigmatic divides between, uh, between the three, four faculties uh, and between, uh, between the, the, the field-specific subjects uh, within the faculties. However, uh, yes, I see, I see a, a tendency. Um, we, are, we, we see also at, at the level of the European uh, Union, uh, they favor very much uh, interdisciplinary studies. Uh, I think uh, the European Commission, the European Union has been very important in, in, in promoting possibilities to do uh, good research that uh, is uh, actually interdisciplinary. The first and most obvious is, is related to, um, uh, to the welfare state. Obviously, but this is this is almost so 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 easy to say that what does it actually mean? But but we have a history of state-friendly societies where we accept that the state can both be uh, be fair, generous, uh, and we ac ac accept it uh, that we live in in state-friendly societies. Uh, so so um, how could we? move on to make uh, the welfare state better in, in, in handling co-production, co-creation with citizens to be a, to be a generator of uh, collaboration ac across, uh, across uh, enterprise, um, conventional enterprise, social economy, social solidarity economy, uh, civil society, activists, and, and all of that. 
but we have a we have a very very strong starting point for this. Furthermore, um, I think concerning concerning this uh, rural urban divide, we have we have a strong position there. Um, both because in in our in in the Nordic countries, uh, the the cooperative uh, tradition. Uh, was very strong with with, with respect to de uh, developing the rural areas and also also urban areas. So I think to harvest knowledge to really move into to linking better uh, rural life to urban life is 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 a is another big thing. I would say that we should um, try to promote a situation where uh, social innovation in with, with the activity also of the social and solidarity economy should form maybe, I don't know, 30% of the, of, the, of the national economy. I mean, if we can set targets for, for climate change, if we can set targets for green energy, um, as as in the Paris uh, Declaration and Paris Agreement, uh, why can't we set targets, real uh, hard targets for both for social innovation and social and solidarity economy? I think that that should be a target to set and 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 something to promote to our politicians.